I better put my uh, Madame <laughs> Unicorn hey. have my name on it. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Uh, this is Peer to Peer Mentoring. I'm right here sitting with G. G Aguirre. That, that's his name. And this guy is a beast at DFS in the DFS world. Uh, if you guys don't know what DFS is, um, you know, he's going to get right into the details. And I'm going to call this segment uh, 1001 Ways to Make Money. And um, uh, first of all, I want to. You know, I want to say thanks. Thanks for doing this, bro. Thanks oh, for taking the time. My pleasure, man. You know? I'm, I'm, I was excited when you told me you wanted to do this. I was like, all right, this sounds pretty fun. Sounds exciting because, uh, like I said, I've always, me and you have always kept in touch about getting better in life, in the aspect of uh, wealth and rich and getting farther in life. You know, emotionally too. Mm -hmm. You know, with family, your loved ones, and all that. So we've always kept in touch. So I always like that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, a, a part of, uh, like, a part of you know, staying in touch with you too, is I, I saw like I saw like your post. I saw the stuff that you were doing. I saw your grind. You know, and that's kind of that's what attracts me to people too. Like, like for example, I have like we all have some friends that sometimes you know you you love them to death, but they ain't going nowhere, right? Yeah. They ain't going nowhere. And no matter how hard you tell them, like, hey, dude, you know, let's let's do this, let's, you know, let's do that, set goals, set this, yeah. they ain't doing nothing. So you kind of want to stay, like, inside a circle where, you know, where you see other people like yourself. And that's kind of yeah. that's kind of what I saw in you. And, and you know, I, it, it just, it makes me happy to, you know, I don't want to fast forward <laughs> into what we're going to talk about. But, but let's pause it a little and, and let's talk about how it all began. So the DFS, what does DFS stand for? Uh, DFS stands for Daily Fantasy Sports. It's basically you you make a team of fantasy basketball players, football players, with a certain salary cap. So let's say LeBron James, for example. But everybody knows who LeBron James is. He's worth, on an average, probably 10000 a night. You have $50,000 to make a team of eight players. Then you have to fit that team and put it in certain tournaments, head-to-head, -head, so many other things. But the goal is to score as many points as you can to win money. That way you can beat out other people. Because if you score more than me, you're going to beat me. But Lady Fantasy Sports, I mean, it's been around for almost, I'd say, 10 years now. But it just recently, in the last three years, it has taken up. Because I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but there's been commercials that are like, oh, this guy won a million dollars, you know, this and that. and that. And honestly, that made me mad because I'm like, it is not like that. It is not like that. Don't, don't. I feel like you, you ever, you ever seen, yeah. you ever seen Will, you ever seen Will Smith when he goes, it's not like that. It's not like that. It's like that. You know, I'm like that. Because it's not like that, you. I think, you remember about two years ago, I think it was Houston, I said, hey, I'm going to set up, um, a meeting, I'm gonna teach everybody football and all this and everything, teach you how to make teams, you know. And I invited 10 guys and out of everybody, of course, Houston was the only one that showed up <laughs> because he was interested in making more money, mm -hmm. being more financial stable. And, and a lot of people take this as a gambling thing. Mm -hmm. I don't. I take it as a game of skills. So, so, le, le, so a lot of people that won't know DFS they will think that this is straight gambling. So what's the difference between gambling in a casino and playing DFS? And this is the way I always say it to people. Because I get asked this question all the time. I can walk up to a poker table, but not knowing the cards, right? And I can say, okay, this is my card. This is what I deal with. Okay, cool. Then, you know, you go, you play the house, you play the cards and everything. And you can win. You have the order against you, though, most of the time. You know, if you're playing against better players or whatnot, you can, they can block you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you play 21, they hit you. Jack, 21, you know, you can bust. Mm -hmm. But the way I put it, in DFS, I know what I feel like. If I research, and I like this certain player, and he's going to do this good, I can put those players, and if they're consistent, and like I said, this isn't, you, you just jump in, and do it like, oh, this player is going to do great. No, you have to research. You have to put your mind to it. You have to study the players. And I feel more comfortable saying, all right, this player is going to, this team is going to do good. Rather than going to a jackpot, a jack black table saying, hit me. You know, not knowing that outcome. At least if I go, 
I press that intro button, I know that player is gonna do good because he's done this well in the past. I've had history, I've had research uh, uh, statistics that tell me he's done this well against this player. You know, there's a lot of data behind it, and the thing is, this is this is an analytic game. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, it changed me so much the way I think about numbers. Well, I've never really cared about math. I've always mm -hmm. hated math, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I, numbers is like my new thing now. It's like numbers. Um, I study backgrounds of players. I study. I have. Huh, there's so much to it. But the thing that really, I got did that meeting. Ever since that moment, I got really dedicated into it. And I read books. I had to read books. How to research? I think I gave you a book one time. Yeah, yeah, you I sent mean, me a couple. Yeah. Every, every, like, I think they updated every year. Yeah, every you year. would send me the the book every year, and yeah. I would read it too. Every year they updated it, and like every year there's something new I learned. Yeah. And the thing I noticed about this world of the daily fantasy sports is that you never you never end learning. Like it's a it's a never ending like learning lesson every day. Um, win or lose, you learn something every day. But the one thing I learned is that. You have to grind, and if you're willing to take your time and effort, you can get very far in this business. But if you don't, honestly, you'll get left behind. That's the truth. So, um, um, where where do I want to start? I, so, how what what got you into DFS? What what you know? I, somebody just just doesn't wake up and go <laughs> like, ah, that's what I'm gonna do. I uh, uh, honestly. I, I, me and my brother, we asked each other this question, like, when did we start playing? And I realized that I never even, I don't remember, but I think what happened, <laughs> I actually got into it when I was playing fantasy baseball. I've always played fantasy football, fantasy baseball, you know, with uh, some of my friends, but when I heard about, I think I saw it online, and then I played a little bit of baseball, and then I love football. And I was like, oh, this is, oh I'm going to do great, you know. I know everything about football. There's no way so, I'll lose, you know? So would you always win, like, in your fantasy football leagues? Like, you know, the Yeah, the I would friends, dominate, dude. I would dominate, dominate, man. I mean, this ring right so, here. So that... <laughs> this ring right here, we oh, can win. Yeah, we, we dude, do it for show fantasy it, show football. It, show it, show it, bro. I want people to see it. <laughs> we, we, we do fantasy football rings and stuff, and... <laughs> oh, that's pretty awesome. You know, man. we... We just we enjoy it like this. We have a league called The League, and that's what I call my league. It's after a TV show. It's a very funny show. I suggest you guys watch it. But, you know, I was really into it, right? So, like, I'm like, oh, I know football, this and all that. And short story short, it's a different monster. I mean, I was negative $1,600 within two months. Two months. Because I was so into it and I wanted to win. But I would win a little bit, but then lose a lot. Win a little bit, and then lose a lot. And I was like... <laughs> You know, so, I was, uh, the so thing that, is, I we used to work. I used to work for this company called Stouffer's, and we did have like a kitchen, and there's computers there. You're not allowed to use them, but I did because I was so into it, and I was like, I'm getting my butt kicked at this, you know. And I was like, what do I need to do? So, what I do? If anything that anybody else does, well, I ran to my mom. No, I'm kidding. I didn't run to my mom. I ran to Google. I ran to Google, and I'm like, how to win more at daily fantasy sports. And I felt like the biggest idiot in the world because there was a different world out there with tools, with articles, with research, with guys that were professional giving advice, with videos, with podcasts. So and I was like, so basically, so basically, you were playing this game blindly. Yeah. Thinking that yeah. you know because you were dominating in in it your fantasy, fantasy league you know, like, fantasy. That it was gonna like correlate with, fat mm -hmm. and then when you exactly. the million bucks or yeah, whatever yeah, that they yeah, were you promoting know, on the you know, team, because like, I remember that, and and I'm a I'm I'm a curious person, so that I was like, how like for me for for me because I do DFS too from time to time, but I you know not not to his extent, <laughs> but um, uh, I do it, and, and the reason why I did is because I'm a I'm really curious person. I want to see like. How how is how is like is it legal? Do you win? Do, you know, and I found out all this stuff. Like even when you go to the website, like it tells you like uh, facts. You know, that that's one of the most common questions. Oh yeah. I believe like is this legal? And it is. Yeah, like, it, it like is. the the. And you'd be amazed that it's legal in Utah. The, yeah, yeah, you know, that's yeah. Like, that's, exactly. That's the thing that got me but curious like, too. But like, like in Vegas is bad, it's, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. That's the it's thing so I it, it, it's, the, it's the, so the, ironic. So, so the so game. Ironic. The reason why it's banned in Vegas, and I hope. Okay. 
good. The reason why it's legal in Utah because it's called a game, called a game of skill. Yeah, exactly. It's not exactly. a gambling. Mm -hmm. So, so, so by gam law, gambling, like it, the definition of gambling, is saying that you leave everything to yeah. chance. It's it's everything to chance. While DFS is strategic, like it, like he says, it's yeah. the numbers, the skills. You have to look at all this stuff. I mean, you don't have to look at it, but if you want to, be, <laughs> if you want to be making fifteen hundred like me the first two months, yeah, yeah, yeah but, exactly, exactly. But no, so like basically, the reason it's big on Vegas because it's gambling. But the biggest reason I believe so in the industry of the daily fantasy sports world, if you guys look it up, uh, there's a guy named Crazy Gaby. He talked about it, how the industry was changing so much. And they started banning state after state. They started banning Las Vegas. Then they banned Texas. Then they banned New York. Then they banned, uh, I think, Matt no. Um, and actually, FanDuel was FanDuel and DraftKings was in New York, right? Yeah. That, right. That, that's their headquarters. That was their yeah. headquarters. And um, so it got banned in all these states, but <laughs> luckily in Utah, they did legal. And I was worried because, like, I, I know people are like, oh, would you would you even care? I'm like, yeah, I would care. It was a it was a hobby, but most of all, it was a side job. I was making at least a couple hundred bucks a week, you know. And you know how much we got paid our old job, and you know, a couple hundred bucks could go a long way. We, we actually met at this place uh, at Stouffer's. This is where we <laughs> met, like you know, Me and this years guy, we ago. The, we had some ago. of the best times, man. <laughs> we would laugh. We, we would work hard. <laughs> we would work hard, but we would like, we would make jokes out of the stupidest things, and people would be like just looking at us like. I mean, yeah, I mean, we take lunch and break together, you know, try to work together. Yeah. And um, I remember the first time I met this guy's brother, he, I go, hey, who do you want me to rotate? And he goes, whoever's the cutest, go, go tell him to break. I'm like, and he's like, I'm just kidding. And I'm like, his brother was funny. I'm like, all right, sense of humor, I see, but okay. <laughs> but no, we, uh, so basically I'm like, all right, you know, and I started doing it. So I think it is 1,600, right? I landed on that Roto Grinder page. It's a big website, which is like uh, what well, ESPN is the fantasy world. Mm -hmm. And they taught me so much, but then I realized I'm I'm just as good as these guys. You know, if not, I'm better than some of these guys. But there's this thing called a bankroll management. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have the skills to manage it, you're gonna lose a lot of money. Mm -hmm. so, and that and that basically says bankroll management is like. You know, you 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 don't want to bet all your freaking. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket in one night and then just you know have no money left. Cause then I think I think that's that's another like gray area between gambling and strategically playing this game. You you never want to be in a spot where you know you're gonna be betting your rent, you yeah. know, and all this because you're a hundred percent sure that the you know that that because there's an, some. There's intangibles, people, there's yeah. intangibles, right? There's risk. That you, you never know what could happen. No, there's not 100% certainty. It's a, it's, here's an example. And I, I'm not going to lie. I'm a, I'm a high risk, high reward type of guy. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing is, like, I was like, oh, all right, well, you know. Example one night, LeBron James. We know who he is, right? Mm -hmm. At the last minute, mm -hmm. at the last minute, this guy, during the, during the, before the tip off, he said he was feeling a little bit of tightness in his back. I had about 80% exposure of him in my roster, so that's probably 80 rosters out of 100, mm -hmm. you know? The last five seconds. And so usually within the last five minutes, I don't expect any news to break out. He got taken out of the game, he didn't mm -hmm. play. He gave me a big fat zero on the score. So mm -hmm. what happened? I don't know, I think I lost like $600 mm -hmm. that night. So there's risk, but there's more rewards usually. Mm -hmm. But you have to be smart, you have to be willing to make sacrifices. And if you can't, I tell people, like people, a lot of people have asked me, hey, gee, how do I get into it? How do I win money? I'm like, well, you know, you have to realize this is a, it's an investment. That's what I always say. It's an investment you have to be willing to make and you have to be able to afford it. You can't afford it. I don't want you playing with your rent money. I don't want you playing with your payment for your car. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people and a lot of people. And I'm pretty sure we were gonna get into it. I have a I have a group called the DFS Roundtable. Oh yeah, yeah, and that that's we, you know, basically um, <laughs> G he he helps people out too. He gives out tips. He sometimes gives out like all the all the stuff that he's been working on throughout the week, all his spreadsheets and everything. He gives them out for free. 
you know, and, like the people that just looking for help. And what got me like really to make that page, and I remember you, I, I, I added you right away because, yeah. you know, I got kicked out out of another Facebook group. Oh, yeah. And I remember, I remember. They said, they said, you're helping out too much. I'm trying to sell product. That's not fair to me. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. My product, so, my product is better than so, yours and it's free. Yeah. You know? So. And, and he got all butthurted and they kicked me out. And so what happened, the people that were taking my advice, he had like a group of 400 people or something mm -hmm. like that. Those 400 people came over to yeah, my page. And, and I'm actually still like a group of part of that page, you know, because of you. you like you, you, you told me about it and I added. And there's actually no, no more nothing. Nobody, not, not even the guy that used to do it. He don't do it no more. I don't see people. Like everybody that used to be there went to DFS Roundtable. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing, like, I just, the other night I hit over a thousand uh, subscribers or friends, whatever you want to call it, and that made me feel good because these aren't, I don't let people in my group that are just like, um, what I like to call advertisers or I'm here to sell this. I think a lot of people that give free advice to their webpage if they have to, or just there to ask questions. They can ask me questions, they can ask other members questions. And most of the time, I was uh, giving them, you know, I was asking, I was answering their questions. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I'm very busy, mm -hmm. so it's hard. But last year, I started making a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So it allowed me to get all these plays and everything. And at the time, I wasn't working. I was like, no, this was about a year and a half ago. I wasn't working. I was like, I'm going to do this full time, you know. And I started selling a spreadsheet. I was making a pretty good profit. I was making about 1800 a month just selling a spreadsheet to customers. Mm -hmm. But then I realized it was a lot of work for one person. Mm -hmm. And people have asked me, hey, are you going to make your own website and all this? And I'm like, yeah, I am. And then I started working a little bit on it, but it was so much time consuming because I was spending, I would wake up at 8 in the morning, do my numbers, get my projection, get the, the stats, get the data, get the defense first positions, everything. And you, you, you see my product. I, I it's a lot that. of detail. Mm -hmm. And um, I would all the way to 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, I would eat lunch all the way to 12. I know I'm a, I'm a fatty, I take an hour lunch. <laughs> but in reality, I like to watch TV for an hour and relax my head a little bit because I'm just crunching numbers for almost six hours, four hours straight. And then at 12 o'clock, I remember from 12 to three, I would read those more, read all the articles that would come out. And as I'm reading, I'm learning all the plays and whatnot. And then I go back and adjust my spreadsheet if I see anything I like. Because that's the thing that you have to take in this business. You have to take things, they call it the grain of salt. So like if I give you a piece of advice, you don't have to take it. Mm -hmm. You can take it to the grain of salt, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's something I learned because a lot of people are like, oh, oh, you gave me bad advice and this and all that. I'm like, I didn't put a gun to your head until you tell you to play this player, you know? Mm -hmm. But I was doing that and I was like, all right, pretty good money making on the side, you know? It was fun staying at home, you know, working from home. But then I realized that all that time I was making, um, and I did it this year, I stopped making a spreadsheet, stopped handing it out, and I stopped selling it, and because it was time consuming. And it was taking a lot of time out of me, and a lot of mentally, a big toll on, my man, on, on, my, on myself. I mean... That's because, you know, people were like asking, like, what yeah. time, what time? What time is it going to be? You remember? Mm -hmm. What time is it going to be out? Mm -hmm. What time? Gee, what are and your top players? Then, or, yeah. Oh, and then the, the worst part is it wasn't even like that kind of stuff. The worst part was making sure that the people that paid for the monthly subscription, that what day did it end for them? Mm -hmm. What day did I have to send them out an email? To, I had like a little template mm -hmm. saying, oh, your subscription for the DFS roundtable have expired mm -hmm. and all this, you know? Just doing all of that was like, I was like so frustrated. <laughs> so, so I was just like, oh man, okay, is it really worth it? <laughs> It would have been worth it, but I would have needed a partner. Yeah, that's the truth. And my so brother, I had my brother help me out for a little bit, but he had the he had the family, you know. But so I did this. I started the DFS Roundtable page, and then um, I just kind of like took off on my own. I had people call me, like they wanted me to be on podcast and whatnot. Oh yeah, and I seen some of the uh, I, I you you actually post them on the DFS yeah. Roundtable, right? Too and people and, and that's the thing, like in this industry. Uh, a lot of people backstab each other because, like, it's just like, not even, I don't even want to say backstab, it's more like, I'm better than you, so, 
Uh, yeah, you know like, what? Like, yeah. you mean as, as in, like... They, they envy each like, other. Like, they, they, they think that they're more professional, that yeah. they know more stuff, that they know more about the sport. And this well, sport. that and they get jealous of each other. It, it, uh... I don't want to say it out here, but it's just, like, ego. Egos get in the way, they clash, you know? Okay. But, like, my, I never, I learned something that, don't let my ego crash, because I never know what I can learn from other people. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, I had people offer me, hey, you want to write for my website? And one thing I hate, I hate writing. I, I've never been a fan of writing, I've always been bad at it. And I, I can write, but it, the thing is, I have to put an effort into it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I was like, you know what, this is just, not writing is just not for me. And I did try it out for a couple of websites. And they they were paying me, but I was like, I'm just not good at it. I mean, I know I can I can give you the advice, but I'd rather speak it because it takes me too much time to type mm-hmm. it and whatnot. And then I realized, all right, I'll do podcasts. And then I like doing. And then on Facebook, I did live videos. I really enjoy that because people interact interact with mm-hmm. me, and that was fun. And uh, sometimes we get over like 300, 200 comments, and I'm like, oh my goodness, so many questions, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's just fun, <laughs> and but at the same time, it's just like I do it weekly. I've been doing it for like the last seven weeks of football, and people, one of the best things about this is people send you, and I'm pretty sure you had it too, but like I've seen it. I've seen people message you, say, thanks for the great advice. I really appreciate it, and all this and, and all that. And, and I think that's what it is. Like when you do something where you really enjoy it, you know, like, like it's like, like you say, it's work. But it's something that you love too. Like you were involved with sports even before you did that. So for you to correlate work and sports, it's like a dream come true, yeah. right? It's it, a dream come true. I love right? it because I never would have thought, and you guys hear this a lot, that they, people say, do what you love. I'm doing what I love because I love sports, I love fantasy sports, and I love learning. And maybe I didn't love learning before because I thought it was boring, but when it involves sports, you're going to love learning, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing. What do I do after people ask me, oh, all this time and effort, what do you do? I'm like, well, after I finish all my time and effort, I wash it. So I literally live, breathe, and eat sport, you know, and sleep. You know, I, I'm telling you, I have nightmares sometimes. I'm like, no! Score no damn point! I need to score that touchdown! You know, stuff like that. No, uh, no, I'm kidding. I don't really have nightmares, but you know, at the same, I'm the same One time. point to be yeah. on the green. One but, point. Like, you have to be a, be a DFS to know what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> One point One, to get to the green. Yeah, get to the green. You can get to the money, you know? But the same way, it's like, I'm doing what I love. And I just realized this. I mean, not because of the the big win I just had recently. But I used to have, if I had other wins, you know, I've had other big wins. I mean, 10000 15000 you know, thousands of dollars. But this was my biggest win, and it came at a really, really perfect time, I would say. But overall, if you put your time and effort into this business, you can get far in life. And that's the thing I learned about life, too. I don't know. You know who he is. I don't know if you guys do. Tony Robbins. Mm-hmm. I've never been a big fan of like of buying products that can enhance my knowledge. But then I started I listened to him. I got his product. And... He changed my mind so much about like the life perspective and I told Houston and Houston gave me a couple books I read them I got a couple audio books and I was listening to Houston and we talked back and forth and just over time in the last six eight months my life has been different because not only because of the advice you give me but because of the way I think about things now because before I used to say knowledge is power it is but is what you do with it exactly it exactly because you can have all this knowledge but if you don't use it and utilize it you're not going to get far in life and that's what i was doing with this knowledge is power knowledge of me knowing all the sports and all this stuff but what i do is it, and the thing that tony robin taught me financially i was like all right i'm going to save up a lot of money and that's what i was doing i was working out in san diego you remember that yeah i remember and I showed you my checks. Mm-hmm. I showed you my payment. Mm-hmm. I was making good money. I was like, all right. And then I came back because honestly, I missed my family so much. And I had a big decision to make. And I messaged you and I asked you, hey, what do you think of my situation? I'm kind of in a dilemma. And I decided to come back because I missed my family so much. And it was during baseball season. So I came back. I didn't have a job. And I was like, all right, what do I do now? <laughs> you know? 
And my dad, like, he's like, hey, we have an opening in my job. You want to come? And I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, I was like, well, yeah, whatever. I never asked him what he was doing. I thought he was just doing, like, you know, like, some random okay warehouse company. And then he tells me, oh, you're going to be doing construction. I'm like, <laughs> me? <laughs> you doing construction? You know? And he goes, that's what I do. I do pipeline. I'm like, okay. And then my mom goes, my, I remember my mom goes, really? You? <laughs> and I'm like, this is the guy right here that sits on the computer and like literally just goes like this all day. He looks at a monitor and read. And now we're going to 100 degree, 100 degree weather with heavy boots, helmet, glasses. I don't know if you see it, but I have like a little sunburn. Like, oh, oh yeah, I do see it. You see, see, so see. I have like a little, <laughs> I and like, see it. for the first, and this was a life changing experience for me because I've never done labor work. I did Dofers, but I didn't consider that labor work because there were days where you have hard days and easy days, you know? And Houston and I were like this at that job. We did the mental work <laughs> instead of doing the hard job, so we got back up and easy job. <laughs> And so uh, we were smart, but at the same time, I got into the pipeline business, and I got paid pretty well. And um, but the thing was, it was hard, hard work. I've never worked so hard in my life. The first three months of that job, I got, I think it's called plantar fasciitis, on my feet. It basically, it's like arthritis in your heels, and I couldn't walk, and I was in pain every day. I would take, I would take ibuprofen. I would take like six ibuprofen a day, man, because I was in so much pain, and then. At lunch, I would take off my boot and just rub them. I got compression socks. I got well, everything. <laughs> and I didn't have no insurance at the time. Yeah. And so I was like, man. And then I was like, I give up. I'm, I'm going. I don't care how much it costs. It cost me 500 bucks to go get an anti-inflammatory shot because I didn't have no insurance. And my, my, my feet were like swollen. They were like a giant balloon, man. I had to unloose my boots a little bit. But the thing is, I've never worked construction, so... My body wasn't used to it, and I was heavier. I weighed like two, two sixty-eight. Now I weigh like two forty-four, two forty, I think. Uh, yeah, I weigh two forty. Um, and so I lost a lot of weight within the last three months, and then my feet got used to. Oh, the anti-inflammatory was <laughs> whew, the best investment I ever made, <laughs> and um, I actually enjoyed it. But like I told you. I, I was playing DFS, I, I, all that money that I saved up, I, I knew I wanted to play football really heavy. So I played football, and I started out a week, first week I played $3,000, and after that I won. So, so far from, we have a bankroll management system, it tells me my ROI, return of interest, for what I make. And I was making an average profit of 2.6 grand a week. Yeah. So until week four, I lost 500. Mm -hmm. And today, I told you I lost today. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I didn't lose this week. You know. See, so, I, I, and and I, I want to stop you there because I, you know, this I like to talk to G about DFS because it's. You know, you don't always win, and somebody that tells you they win 100% of the cool. time, like, if you go into, because there's a lot of DFS, I, I believe that there's people out there, like, scamming people about DFSs, you know, saying, like, oh, we win 100% of the time. That's the very first thing when people hit, like, hit me up on, on Facebook or whatever, trying to, trying to sell me their rosters. They tell me I win 100% of the time. I stop messaging them, because I know it. He knows it. You, no matter how good you are, how good of analysis, how good the book, th there's always going to be losses. There's always going to be losses. So I like that he, that G, you know, says the truth. You know, he, you don't always win. It's just the, the thing is that when you win, make sure you, you're, you're, when you win, you win big. But when you lose, you lose, l l you know, a little bit. Not, not, you know, yeah. not, not a lot. You want to break even. Exactly. If, you, if you lose, you want to break even. Mm -hmm. Break even means uh, win what you put in, mm -hmm. you know. But I uh, I don't know. I mean, do you want to talk about what, how I got to mm. the like uh, how I won? The so day? so yeah. So we're we're gonna talk about this, and and it's a funny story because <laughs> I think Monday G was actually saying, "Hey guys," on his page, he was telling all the people, you know, all the thousand people that you have on the DFS roundtable on Facebook, because I saw the message. So he was like, "Hey guys, you know what? 
I'm probably not gonna give out tips. I'm probably not gonna give out you know any advice or anything on NBA because of my work, my work schedule. And he was saying this on Monday, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> I was kind of sad to hear that, you know, because yeah, yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people like like they want to listen to G. They're they're looking forward to the to the you know the Facebook live the advice. the advice and all this and and then comes Monday and then oh comes Monday goodness. and this guy makes forty four thousand dollars that night. I mean sixty percent of people in the United States or something like that. Maybe I'm just throwing out a number. That's what they make in a whole year and this guy made it in one night. Like no. let's show him. Show him. I want okay, you to show him. I want you to show him. And and you know it's here's the picture. <laughs> And I saw this, and I was like, "No way!" He posted it on Facebook, and you gotta see this. Let me okay, make sure that uh, maybe get it a little bit closer. Maybe get a little bit closer. Forty-four thousand dollars in one night. So, forty-four thousand five hundred. Forty-four thousand. But actually, it was more because I I made other team. Hold on, let me see if it or turn it right here. Okay. Camera, this right here. So let's see if it focuses. Focus. Oh, okay. Focus. Focus. There it is. There it is. So, so I made a lot of teams. Obviously, you guys see some how many teams I can make. So you, you this is the most funniest story you'll probably get. <laughs> so um, walk me, walk me through the whole like from when you woke up to to like when. So I posted what you said. You know, I said. I. I posted that, I think it was like around, I think it was during the day or in the morning, I can't remember. Uh, I, I can't remember, I can't remember but, but I knew that this was going to happen because basketball was going to start up and I love basketball. You know how much I love basketball. Mm -hmm. I love watching basketball. I go to bas I go to jazz games. Mm -hmm. I go to so many jazz games, people actually think I got season tickets, dude. <laughs> but in reality, I just love the jazz <laughs> and I love LeBron. But like, that's another story for another day. <laughs> the uh, king, the king. <laughs> he's the king, man. And um, I wake up. At five, five o'clock every day, I I take a shower, I uh, you know I take, <laughs> I for the last month or so I've had been taking like mental focus things for like pills oh, for my brain something. you know because I was studying so much and I was researching so much that I I needed these kind of things like to help me multi multivitamins and um, what else. Just boost, like energy and boost. And I would take them in the morning, gonna go to work with my father. We ride together, we carpool, you know. And about a month ago, I pulled my back. In construction, you work on a lot of labor. So I was working at a different site because they put me to do light duty. I went to the doctor and I pulled my back really bad. Like I went, I'm a fast worker. Like my dad taught me to work hard and not smart, just work <laughs> hard. He's like, I don't give a crap about you working <laughs> just work hard let's go let's get it done you know and that's what my dad is known for he's the hardest working worker at the company and it makes me happy because i see how much his boss appreciates him and he's a cowboy we call him cowboy tad and he calls my dad amigo and like it, he's the only guy he calls amigo everybody else is just like yeah 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 you go do this go do that <laughs> but my dad he treats him like he's really a good friend but then he treats me like that too because i work just as hard as my dad I'm never gonna work harder than him, though. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm just like, there's time, and this, and this is the thing I told Houston before. The biggest motivation in DFS right now for me, and my goal is to retire my parents. I want to get them a house, and I want to retire them. My goal is to win a million dollars. I know it sounds cliche, but it is possible in this industry. It's possible. Man. And even if we win a couple hundred grand and be a financially steady, that'd be great. But so. I wake up, go to work, and I'm like, I'm brooming on the side of the street because that's all I can do is broom the curb. And I'm like, man, NBA starts today, you know? And I posted on Facebook, I said, on my DFF roundtable, I said, hey guys, I work from this time to this time. I won't be able to help out this season. I feel really bad. And to be honest, it's just so hard to research and I'm just not gonna be able to help out. I wanna wish everybody the best. Unless I win forty, forty to seventy thousand dollars with the next. <laughs> and, and I, I remember you said, <laughs> unless I win like forty to seventy thousand dollars, then then I'll be able to quit my job. I'll be able to quit my this. job and do this. And do this like For a that, that's the power and of the so, universe, um, guys. <laughs> I'm like, all right, and we finished the, at the site that we were working at. We finished the project around three o'clock, and 
my boss is like, hey, we don't have no work here, you can leave. Because we usually work till 6.30. Basketball locks at 5.30. I'm like, all right. I'm working 45 minutes away, down in Harriman, so it's pretty far away from Springville. My office is in my house, you know? And I was like, oh, no, nah, I can't play. I won't make it, you know? And so I had to go pick up my dad from the other side at 6.30. And uh, no lie, there's a four-way intersection to a highway. Takes me to my dad, takes me into Slot Lake, takes me into Harriman City, or the back the way I came. And I just hit like a, it's called like, I don't know, I just, I hit like a moment. I was sitting there at the stoplight, I'm like, all right, you can either go pick up your dad, wait for him for two hours and not work, you can either go to this way, what, what are you going to do this way? Oh, well, think, G, how can you make team? You know what I did, right? I went to the public library. <laughs> I went to the to public, the public the library, public library <laughs> of Hammond City. I'm like, I got to go find the library. <laughs> So I go to the library, and I'm like, all right, I gotta find a library. This so, is the so nicest you one. Did, yeah. So you did all your rostering and everything on the library? Listen, okay. And I go to the library, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> I didn't know the story before. Yeah. I didn't know the story. I'm like, so can I, do you guys, this is a really nice library. I can see where all my taxes go to now. <laughs> and she goes, yeah. And I'm like. She's like, it's like a dollar. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I paid a dollar. I'm like, you know, I'm thinking, oh, man, I'm gonna make so much. Oh, come on, let's go. You know, and so I'm pumped. I'm like, yes, I can do, I can do rosters now. So I start entering, and I use a tool that allows me to script, allows me to build multiple teams with the player pool I have. But I have to set my exposures. I have to set my projections. I have to set my numbers. And so I have two hours to do it. And I'm like, oh my goodness. But luckily, my brother, since he was at home during the day, he been doing somewhat of it. And he plays too, but he was excited for basketball, of course, because he could actually do it. I couldn't, I was working. And he's like, dude, I already did this. I'm gonna go to work. I'm at work right now. I'm like, all right, cool. And so I'm like, cool. I got a little bit of help, you know? Mm -hmm. And so here I am, and I'm like, sweet, yes. And I made my team, and I'm like, I'm pumped, right? I'm like, I can put them in. And the thing is, you have to upload it with a CBS file, mm -hmm. and then put it into the FanDuel account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. FanDuel.com, block. Okay. And I was like, and that's what I was gonna say. How did you get into the, into the with the library? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I was like, no, I was like, no, dude. And I'm like, all right, maybe I can do it through my phone, right? Can't do it on my phone. I'm like, Ooh. and so I have a chat room with a group of guys, and I'm like, all right. And I went, I don't know if you're so, so like, so this is like everything was telling you everything that you couldn't done. do it yeah. that day. Yeah, and I was like, oh my goodness. And I'm like, I have to do it. There's a reason why God sent me here, you know? I can do it. And then I'm like, all right. And so I'm like, hey, Tim, I need you to upload my roster. And then he goes, okay, but he's in Texas. In Texas, FanDuel is banned. Oh. DraftKings is not. And Draft he went to... He, no. no it, okay, okay, but keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I didn't, know, I didn't know this. And I'm like, oh, man. And then he tried to put it in, and he goes, dude, they tell me I can't because my state is banned. I'm like, oh, man. And this is, guy, this is the guy that I went to. I went to the Dallas Cowboy Green Bay game like two weeks ago, and I was like, oh, that's a blast. But, oh, I saw some pictures, but... <laughs> yeah. I mean, cheerleaders were hot. I, I saw... Yeah. Everybody said that I had a dirty look with a dirty <laughs> mind. I'm like, they were beautiful. That's what I was thinking, you know? And so anyway, I'm like, oh, man. And so I tried to get my brother, and my brother's like, dude, I can't. I'm working, dude. But I'll try to get off uh, lunch or break. Or he called that a crap break, <laughs> you know, just to go and do that, yeah, yeah. and then go. Doo -doo -doo. But he, uh, he, he couldn't, and it was like 10, 15 minutes before lock, and I'm like, oh, you know how it is before lock, you get stressed out that the tournaments are gonna fill up, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, oh my goodness, no. And so what I did, I messaged everybody else, I tagged people in my group that I had for uh, my chat role that I trust, because the thing is, I'm giving away my account information. I'm giving away, I'm giving you my password. I'm giving you the ability to look at my bank. I'm giving you the ability to look at a lot of personal information. You've seen it. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of stuff you don't want people to know. Mm -hmm. And um, my friend Eddie, he, he's like, yeah, I can do it. I, I don't know where. I'm like, what? And, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I like, touch the game and he goes, hey, $340, right? I'm like, yeah. 81 teams, right? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you want me to put it in? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he puts it in, and I'm like, oh, shit, man. And then, like, 
Mm. And then we're just like, oh, and I was like, wow, I can't. I was like, as soon as I saw that he put it in, because I could, uh, I could see it on my phone, and I'm like. So it was like, and, kind I, of and I went like, like, I went like, I went this chair at the, at the Harriman Library. They're not like, you know. Mm -hmm. And I fell back and landed on my butt, <laughs> and I'm like, oh. And the lady's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. And uh, I get up, and I'm like. I felt so relieved, dude. And I'm like, I'm walking. I'm like, I'm going. I'm. Like, I go pick up my dad now. I got like ten minutes to go pick him up. And I realized I just went through so much just to put in team when I could do it at home for like what ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, whatever, you know. And so it comes with your home, you know. Usually, I live. Uh, we live in an apartment. With my parents and you know, normal day where we eat dinner. And then I started watching basketball, and I felt bad because I'm a big fan of the Jazz. So I, I watched Gordon Hayward, like they were talking about how he broke yeah, his ankle. I saw, I saw, I saw. And I was like, oh, you know. And so my dad didn't know that I had a lot of teams in there. He thought I only had like three or five teams because, you know, he thought I couldn't do it. And then I didn't, I didn't tell him what, what I did. He didn't know I got off work early. But I know what he would have said. Why didn't you come over to over to us? Like, hand me, hand me the tools or something. You could do that, you know? Uh -huh. Because you love to work hard. <laughs> And um, so it comes around, my brother did some teams for my dad. It comes around 9 o'clock, my dad goes, hey, I have a team that's 28 in 28th place in the tournament. I could win. And I'm like, that's awesome, dude. So, so you, haven't, you hadn't even checked? I checked your, mine a little bit. You, you were but I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think it was going to do anything because I was like, oh, I know I have kind of an idea. And then I go, oh, cool. And the night game was the Warriors versus Houston. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, I remember. And, um, I was just like, no. all right, I'll, I'll check my dad, I'll call my dad. And then I get people messaging me, and I think it's just like people trying to ask me questions and whatnot. And I'm like, oh, time to go to bed, because I usually shower like around nine o'clock. All right, ladies, don't, you know. <laughs> uh, don't judge, don't, don't judge. judge. <laughs> <laughs> I shower like at nine o'clock, and then, um, you know, I, I shower, I get out at 9.30, and I go back to my bed. I'm like, all right, I'm looking through my phone. I'm like, all right, cool. I have a team of like, it was like an 80th place, 100th place, you know. And then I see my dad, he's like, he's still in like 25th place. I'm like, oh, that's cool, that's awesome, you know. And then I start doing research for the next day for football. I start doing for the week, I start looking at head. I get all these messages, I'm like, my, my, my brother texted me, he goes, hey dude, you're doing pretty good, you got a team, you got any? You got a chance? I'm like, um, I think so, I don't know, I don't. Next thing I know, I go look at my dad roster, I'm like, but then I see someone in first place, and it's my name. And I was like, in first place. <laughs> in the tournament. And I start looking around, I'm like, should I scream? Should I do something, you know? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to keep it cool. You know, I'm going to keep it cool. Four minutes, four minutes left in the fourth quarter. In the fourth, in the four fourth minute, quarter. And you were first place. I was in first place. So I held it down for like two minutes, and then it bumped me down. Someone bumped me down. And I went from first place to like 50th place. 50th like, oh, place? Okay. And the next thing I know, at the two minute mark, and I remember this because my brother called me, he's on his lunch break, and he goes, hey, <laughs> you, you're, in first, you're in first place? That's crazy, dude. Come on, dude. You can do it. You can do it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And I was like, he, start, he starts like rounding him up. But <laughs> there's no way that he can have any fault. Like, what do you do? You hit up what, who was playing? Who was yeah. playing? Chris Paul? Hey, like, Chris Paul, get more freaking assists. <laughs> I can't change the outcome. You bro. can't change the outcome. It's outcome. not like I'm going to go out there and coach him. <laughs> you! Give me some point. You know? And, uh, yeah. and here's the funny yeah. thing. And so, I'm like quiet, you know, I'm, I'm in my room. I bet you're trying to keep, like, you want to scream, chill. but you, and I'm like, chill. My like, heart, like, my, <laughs> and this is what we call a daily fantasy sports sweat. A sweat means you're in an <laughs> end tournament, you need the time to finish, so then you can finish the game. And I'm cheap. So I don't have like NBA, I mean now I will, now I do, but. <laughs> now I do. Uh, I'm not cheap, I'm just smart, you know? <laughs> And now, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I have two minutes, okay. And I'm like, I'm in my bed, I'm like, leaning on against my bed, I'm just like looking at my phone, I'm like. <laughs> and I have everybody blowing me up, I'm just like. <sighs> and the next thing I know, I'm watching the game, come down to 10 seconds left, I'm in first place, $44,000. 10 seconds, $44,000, I'm like. 10 seconds, okay. And I was just like, and the thing is, during the, this had to be a sign, like I'm telling you, I got like numerous signs, now I'm a big believer that things happen for a reason. 
during halftime show, no, they're not during the halftime, during the commercial break, they show like what's going on in the arena. The song that came on was Lose Yourself by Eminem. You have one shot, one opportunity. I'm like, that's me! <laughs> that's me! Come on! Come on, you know? And I'm like, yeah, that's me! And I was like, that's me! And then I'm like, alright. And then it comes in, 10 seconds left. I don't have Kevin Durant. I have Clay Thompson, Ryan Anderson, Draymond Green. Draymond Green was out because he hurt his knee mm -hmm. in, the third, in the fourth quarter. And. I can't remember the other player, but Kevin Durant gets the ball, shoots it, makes the game winner, so we saw it. And I was like, oh, that's gonna drop me, you know? And I get a video call from Jason. You guys gotta remember, I'm like 10 seconds behind because I'm online from a, a feed that's way behind. Oh, okay. okay. And then uh, Jason messaged me, you won, you won, yeah, yeah, how do you feel? I'm like, hold on, hold on, what are you talking about, I won? And I'm checking on my phone, obviously I have to slide him off the freaking screen to look, and he's like, you won, dude? I'm like... <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. And so what I do, I have my brother on video, right? And so I'm like, and my parents' door is like a little bit down the hall. And they're, they're sleeping, they're knocked out. <laughs> Apparently my dad, he knew he wasn't gonna win, so he fell asleep, right? And I opened the door and I'm like, I won! <laughs> and my mom was like, yeah, I'm sorry, but my mom was like, you were put down! Damn! Did you give me a heart attack? And I was like, I won! I won! And my dad's like, how much did you win? I'm like, $44,000. My mom's like, you won $4,000? And I'm like, no, I won $44,000. $44,000 in and, one night. In one night, and my, my mom jumped up and she's like, yeah! Yes, because they know how hard I've been working, like how much effort I've been making in football. You try to get them just to retire them, man. I'm just like, it's a big goal of mine to retire them. You know, my, my, my most proudest moment can be when I give them a key to their house. I know I'm going to do it. But That's good. that That's night good. we celebrated and we got so happy. I mean, I did a video for the, the round table and I was like, I told everybody, well, I did it. Um, I think I can quit my job. <laughs> I won $44,000. I remember so, seeing that message and I was like, holy crap. Like, and, and, and it was it was funny because on Monday, he had said he, was, he wasn't was going to do it. And then on Tuesday night, you know, it's giving me a little bit of the chills. It was like, you're able to do what, you know, like, you, yeah, you first you, thought like, oh, I'm not going to do it. And then from one day to another, your life for changes. Example, changes. Your life changes. And, it, and that's the thing, like, people ask me, how do you feel, like, after that win? And this is how I feel. I don't feel any different than what I feel the day before because I value what I have and, just as valuable as money. Mm -hmm. My family, and, my my loved ones, my, uh, maybe not my job so much, but, you know, because it's just... It's not what I love to do. What I love to do is DFS. Mm -hmm. And but and what I what I think like what is what this is good for me like in, in from my perspective of what I see is that like you won that money, you deserve that money, but you know that it's not over yet. Like you know what I mean? It's it's not it's, it wasn't like a it wasn't like it wasn't like lottery because this is his job, this is what he loves to do. Does that make sense? So, like, in any given day, it could happen again. You could yeah. win more. He could, you know, you know. I could easily lose more too. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But, but you, you have to continue to be smart, and you know, your bankroll management and all this. Like, you, you've had enough experience where, right. where you, you know, you Turn won't fall into them. those traps. You yeah. know, and and what what advice would you give? to people that want like because people are going to see this video yeah, you're good, and you're good. you know and yeah. i'm gonna you know forty four thousand one night you people are going to get excited they're going right. to they're going to want to listen and and you know and i want you guys to you know whoever looks at this and is interested add yourself you know hit them up on on yeah, facebook okay, um you know the Garrison, dfs round table. the dfs round table hit, hit me up if you guys want so i can give you links to to his you know to his stuff because i don't think he has just anybody I don't, you, I don't, I mean, I've had like over thousands of people I've rejected because I know, I don't, I don't mean to sound like a creeper or a stalker, I do look into their profile and make sure that they're not like fake, you know, and advertisers or they're scam artists trying to say, oh, well, if, like those one day you said 80% success rate, I can win this and all that. But I don't want those type of people giving advice, I want people that can really help. Mm -hmm. And not only that, if you do offer a product on my, on my page, you have to talk to me beforehand and I have to look into your product and see if it, if it, 
if it's within the effective. standards of your of yeah, if your, it's within my standard your, of uh, if, you, if I think it a good product, mm -hmm. you know, I guess you can say I review it. Mm -hmm. But if there is any advice I give anybody that wants to start doing this, you know, um, this video or whatever, what would you tell? You them? have to be willing to invest your time and effort. And when I mean time and effort, time is money. And you can't just think, oh, I'm going to put on a team and I'm going to win a million dollars. No. I always, I put nearly, I say on average a day, four to six hours. But that's me, because I actually like, I'm a, I'm a geek. But there's some people that make it do, they can do okay within three hours, two hours of research, you know. And when you say research, of course, you're not going to be like, on. you can take a little break every now and then, but you're reading, you're listening, you know. But time and effort is a lot. But I think the biggest thing that I take away from this, you have to be financially stable enough to do it. Because I've seen a lot of people put in their, money, their rent money. I've seen a lot of people put in their car payment. And they think, oh, well, I have this money. If I can make a little bit of money, I can pay this. No. You have to, what I did, I, I, I've been in that situation before where I was like, oh, you know, oh, I'll put my credit card to it, you know. No, it's not like that. You have to be able to, I call it an investment. It's a game of risk, and you have to take chances. But if, if I had to take three things, one, time and effort, two, willing to invest, and three, enjoy it. Because in the end, if you're not doing what you like and you don't enjoy it, why are you doing it? And those three things is what I do. I love it so much. I mean, I wouldn't be creating a Facebook page, giving out advice to people for an hour. I mean, sometimes I go on and talk for like an yeah, hour. Yeah, right. and and I've is, been on some of those too. <laughs> and the thing is, it's not like I'm talking to other people, like talking with other people along with, on the side of me. I'm talking myself, helping out other people, you know, and they're not talking back to me. They're just typing mm -hmm. questions and I answer them. And it's not... It's not, it's, it's for me, I could easily charge all these people because the business, they're, they're all about making money if they're giving advice, but I don't. I mean, I have people today, this guy won $250 on one lineup and he's like, oh, thank you, Kirsten, for putting out your spreadsheet for free, you know. The last couple of weeks I put it out for, for free, but I, before I was just like, you know, I, would, I wanted to focus on me. But I just realized that this business can change your life for the good or the worst, but if how you make it. I mean, I was making it sixteen hundred dollars when you first started. Like, like and that's enough for some people to go like, okay, maybe this <laughs> maybe is I it quit. for me. Maybe <laughs> this is it for me if you're you know, when you start in your negative You know, I've been eating ramen dollars. noodles for the last two weeks. I think yeah, you know, maybe I should stop doing this. <laughs> but you know, you persevere and then you you know, you keep doing it year after year and it comes, you know, a day where like like I don't know if you ever read the the secret but it, it basically says like, whatever you work hard, whatever you focus on, it's gonna happen. You're gonna materialize it within your own head. You know, from one day, you you know, on Monday you said you were gonna, you weren't gonna do this anymore, and you weren't that like <laughs> you weren't gonna be able to do it. But you knew in your head that that wasn't true. You knew some somewhere Monday, behind it, somehow, like, like yeah, exactly. Somehow you were gonna do it, and and on Tuesday night, that's what happened. You know, that was the outcome. Like you 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 said it out loud. But you knew in your head, deep down in your heart, that if you were gonna do whatever it took to to be able to keep doing it. And on Tuesday night, that's what happened. And honestly, I didn't think it was gonna happen with basketball. I thought it was gonna be with football because I've been doing so well in football. But then I realized I did it in basketball, and I was like, "Wow, this is awesome!" <laughs> you know, it was awesome. I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed it. And I've I've already invested some money, like with a business that I want to get into, and then. Um, I've also, I rewarded myself a little bit. I'm making a really nice office. So, first thing I I said it like I have some mentors of mine too, and that's what they say. Like, you work hard and you get money, reward yourself. There's nothing wrong with rewarding yourself. Like that's the reason why you work so hard. There, there's you know there's a reason why you do it. And this life, we only have one life, so yeah, we have man. to enjoy that's it. That's, that's you so know? true, man. We like, have to enjoy it. I, I think like, people just. So Focus like so much. Oh. Yeah, like people are like, you know, this, 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 but I believe like there's a balance, you know, with being happy, like with family, with money, with you know, sports, with all this, like it has to be a balance. Like, like I think is it me or people worry too much about like 
the, the, the responsibilities, I understand there's responsibilities like bills and all that, but if you have to see what's in front of you, like your family, mm -hmm. like your loved ones, your your job, your you know, what what your goals are. And I always told people set goals. And I set a goal, you know, I, I, like when I posted that thing, you know, if I make 40, 70, 70, that was no, that wasn't me just posting it because of posting it because that was my goal in order to, to, to quit my job and do it full time. Because I know that can stable me from doing this full time and giving that risk if I lose money. And I still have finance for the whole year, you know. I can get a job any day. Mm -hmm. I have experience everywhere. But the thing is, like I had to say, big risk, high investment. But you have to be willing to make the time and effort. Man. Man, it's... It's, it's crazy because we've known each other for a <laughs> long time. And, like, I just think about it, Houston. We've talked about, like, we recently, like, the last year or so. It's like, not financially, just, like, the life aspect. Like, responsibility, wealth, you know, being hungry. And I think that's a thing that I want to have. I want I want to... I'm going to... I'm gonna have it in my mo my model is gonna be be humble but always be hungry, you know? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not the best daily fantasy sports player. There's guys out there better than me, but the only reason why I think they're better than me is because they have a bigger bankroll. They have a bigger money. I can score just as good as they can, you know, or not, it's better. But the thing is I don't have millions of dollars, mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. like these guys are playing five hundred thousand dollars a day and they can risk it because they're rich, you know. Mm -hmm. I am betting a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. I have a heart attack. <laughs> I won't see. The, I won't live to see the next day. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, man. But man, I, I thank you, thank you again for for coming through. You Always, know, man. Letting letting me know about you know the story. I want to know how that day went, and I didn't know how crazy it was. On Tuesday, you know, and, and I, I'm, 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 like, I'm, I'm letting everybody here know this. I don't mean to point at you, because my mom always says it's bad to point at me. But this guy right here, we talk from time to time, and just like you know, we motivate. I mean, I felt like you motivated me. And I hope I motivated you. Yeah, in some yeah. Way. And I, like I, I told mean, you too. Like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't send my when I was working out in San Diego. I wouldn't send my paycheck to random people, and like, you know. But I trusted Houston because. I would, he would motivate me. I was watching some of his videos. I was watching, he would like tell me that he's doing this. He's reading these books and whatnot. He sent me some books. I bought those books right when he sent me. And I like, I was like, oh man, my head hurts from reading all this stuff. But, you know, it's just, I honestly was highly suggest people to get Tony Robbins. This guy's changed my life so much. And he has so many different products. But I mean, his voice might might be a little bit annoying, but <laughs> it's just because he has that strong, strong voice, man. Like it's like, oh, hey, dude. guys, like, let's get yeah, this. No, like, <laughs> like, you know, you gotta take your your life aspect. You gotta digest. And when I say digest, I'm like, okay, dude, calm down, man. <laughs> you know, but he, I, um, Tony Robbins was a big motivation in my life. Houston, um. A lot of books, I mean, I have like five or six books. I'm pretty sure Houston has like three of those books that he suggested to me. But overall, take the time and time and effort. Dedication, it means a lot. That's it, that's all I got, man. All right, this, this was a thousand and one ways to make money. This was one of um, one of the best guys I know in the <laughs> DFS world. You know, I trust him. I've invested in him sometimes in rosters too. And, you know, it, it, that, that's how it is. Like, you, you guys always want to keep your options open, you know, learn some stuff and have good people around you so, you know, you, you grow as a person too. And, and like he said, um, you know, I, when, he, when before I started doing all these videos and wanting to help people out, you know, give them out advice, uh, he was one of the big motivations that I saw, you know, with the DFS. He was helping out people in, this, in, in that certain industry that he loved. So I was like, hey, well, I like to talk to people. I like to help people out, especially yeah. that the people need help all the time, but they're too, their ego is getting in their way. They don't want to ask for help. They don't want to, you know, read more. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, that's what I, I, I feel like I'm doing. Like I'm helping people expand their knowledge into like saying it's okay to need help. It's okay to ask for help. You know, just not, you know, not everybody is going to help you. But if there are people willing to help you and giving you advice, you know, take it sometimes. Yeah. And um, this was, thank you for 
tuning into peer to peer mentoring. This was my first, um, my first, you know, <laughs> my first, uh, what, what, um, uh, success, uh, success story. <laughs> success story, exactly. Um, you know, and and thank you for coming again, dude. Testimonial, dude. Like, <laughs> is my first guest in peer to peer mentoring, and I'll have a lot more. And hopefully in a couple months or in a days, I, I want to see when you reach 50,000 one night, 100,000, and maybe. unto the million, unto the million. And, know, man. you know, hopefully yeah. we'll be in your big ass house, you know, it will be like, <laughs> my hey, office, dude, yeah, your office, you, man. well, you know, we'll do a special one. We're seeing like what, what, you know, what my progress is. Yeah, what the progress is. And, and again, guys, if you guys are interested in learning or getting into the DFS world, contact me on YouTube, my Facebook, or G DFS roundtable. I don't know if you want to show yeah, them or do you want me to post the link. Yeah, just post the link. I'll post a link on this video on a DFS roundtable if you guys are interested. I mean, I'm pretty sure G is pretty busy, but you know, so you have to understand that this is that's his job. But um, you know, he'll give out tips. He'll do out. He'll oh, yeah. do videos. Yeah. He'll do all this stuff to help people out. And just keep your eyes open, man. If you guys love sports and you guys have never heard of DFS, you know it's something to try out and make money, man. Forty-four thousand one night. Hey, who wouldn't want that? <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> All right, guys. See ya.